Welcome to the Path Monk Presents podcast. My name is Sean Donnelly Lewis, and today we're talking with Anthony Stevens. He's the founder and CEO at SixClicks.io. Anthony, how's it going? Very well, thanks, Sean. Good to be here. Yeah, thank you so much for for joining the show today. Okay, tell us about Six Clicks. I, I'm assuming it has something to do with websites and, and those sorts of things, or does it not? Well, uh, very happy to share the story on on where the name came from. In actual fact, um, uh, Six Clicks is a software as a service platform designed to help businesses with risk and compliance, and uh, it's unique in the sense that we designed the platform to be used by basically two markets. One is the advisor community. So consultants, lawyers, uh, anyone who's advising businesses around risk and compliance, as well as the uh, the business themselves. So uh, in actual fact, one of the major financial uh, press um, publications referred to us as the zero for risk and compliance, right? As in used by both both those audiences, um, which is which is reasonably unique. Uh, so yeah, risk and compliance is the business we're in. Okay. So who who would be some of your clients? Would that be mom and pop companies that are kind of kind of trying to protect what they do, or is it Fortune 500? Talk about your clientele for a second. Sure. So um, in those two market segments, we work with some of the biggest. Uh, advisory firms in the world. We've got um, partnerships with the likes of BDO, you know, global accounting firm, uh, as well as in the Australian or Asia Pacific market, the uh, the top few uh, cybersecurity consulting and advisory firms, so CyberTX, Pure Security, uh, and a number of others, uh, including some of the big four. I think uh, so. They use our platform as well as some niche players, right? You know the not necessarily the mum and pop advisors, but the advisor the advisory firm with half a dozen consultants uh, use our platform with their client base. And so, typically, the client base that um, we target in in terms of the end client is uh, probably not the Fortune 500 necessarily, but the mid to enterprise level uh, organisation. Those that are looking for, uh, particularly in the cyber security or privacy space. Uh, a platform that's really easy to use, affordable, quick to get up and running, um, that helps them with um, like a cybersecurity maturity program, which, as you know, is um, is particularly relevant today. Yeah. So, so when it's so niche and it's so exact, how have you been able to grow the business? Has it been, has it been any digital marketing? Has it been inbound? Has it just been referrals? Yeah, we um, a lot of it's been. Um, sort of referrals ultimately, but we actually set out at the start of, like our product's been around for probably in market for just over 14 months. So the start of 2020, actually about six weeks before COVID uh, started, we, uh, we we launched our product. Uh, so 2020 was an interesting, interesting year for us and for everyone, of course. Um, but we've done some things that are reasonably unique in developing a community out there that's focused and really interested on in uh, contemporary or, or new approaches to risk and compliance. Because there's a lot of software out there that's, you know, pretty long in the tooth, you know, costs a lot of money, takes ages to implement. Um, six clicks is the, the other end of that spectrum. So the way we develop that community is we, we have a, a TV channel called Six Clicks TV. We have guests um, regularly on that, like a couple of times a week. Um, we obviously publish a lot on social media. Our follow account on LinkedIn has gone from, you know, obviously nothing for a business when we when we founded it. It's now nearly two and a half thousand uh, followers in the last eight months. Um, and we also have a partnership with Ticker TV, who are a global streaming TV network where we where we host uh, a weekly uh, segment with them around risk and compliance. Uh, we do that exclusively, so that's that's a fantastic partnership, and and it's it's largely video that gets us gets us out there. Um, you know, a lot of businesses, um, you know, the 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 way that they communicate is via email or you know blog or something like that, right? Which is pretty pretty traditional um, for our market segment. We're we're going down this path of being really contemporary and involving people in the narrative and. And developing a community that way so that's pretty cool it's worked for us so far so we'll 
we'll, we'll double down on that for sure. Yeah. And does the website play any role in, in acquiring new clients for you guys? Yeah. I mean, for sure. We, uh, website traffic's gone like up considerably um, over the last six months in particular. We, we, we're we really transparent. We publish a lot of, you know, we pu publish our pricing on our website. We publish, you know, what the product does. You can sign up for a free trial. So, so it's a website that people go to and then can do something as distinct from just being general brochureware. Um, so yeah, the short answer is we do. Um, and increasingly there's, there's, you know, the people can book demos, they can get support, all that kind of stuff on our website. So um, that's, that's used increasingly. Yeah, so, so you're talking, you already talked a little bit about strengths of being transparent and those sort of things. It, now I'll ask you to put your critical hat on for a second. If you were to improve the website, where do you feel like you could, where you, where you could improve? Would it be the, the ability to convert, the quality of leads, the user experience? Which one of those three? Um, I'd say the ability to convert ultimately. Um, like, you know, it's the, it's the call to action, getting that streamlined with, um, with the content that we publish on the website. Like we, we, it's, we have lots of people coming to the website, no doubt, looking for very different things, right? They might be focused on a very niche topic or, or content in the, in the world of risk and compliance. Content is like the fuel for the car, right? So, um, you know, might be a particular standard law or regulation that they're looking to, you know, be compliant with in some way. Um, so it's those sorts of scenarios that um, I think, you know, drive people to the website, but ultimately we want them to do something, either book a demo with us or, or sign up for a free trial. So I think, you know, my suspicion is that that's, um, that's where we could improve. And coming back to what you guys offer the service, um, just for everyone listening, what would you say would be the thing that sets you guys apart from other people in the same space? Um, yeah. I, I don't know anything about the space that you're in in the sense of, is it a crowded space? And, and what do you guys do just, just a little bit differently? Yeah, um, that's a great question. It comes up, comes up all the time. So I can, I can answer it. Um, with confidence. <laughs> that's uh, always good. <laughs> the, uh, look, the, the, the government's risk and compliance market is, is um, interestingly reasonably crowded, but it's crowded with, uh, you know, what, what I refer to as the sort of old school players, right? People who develop software, you know, 20, 30 years ago, they've sold it in a very enterprise software manner with, you know, guys running out doing six month sales cycles. Um, you know, inevitably none of the pricing is particularly transparent if at all. Um, we, we just in, in terms of ease of use, you know, transparency, affordable pricing, we're quite disruptive in that sense. Um, because you can, you know, click to sign up and get up and running in a matter of matter of minutes. Um, in terms of the sort of features of the of the platform and how do they compare, um, we integrate platform directly into our platform in, into into six clicks. Sorry, we integrate content directly into six clicks. Um, that's really important because a lot of the systems out there um, that you would otherwise buy but buy are basically empty. You know, you log on, there are a bunch of forms strung together. Um, the, the logic is sound, but you've then got to spend months or weeks or months importing all the stuff that you need. Um, we take a different approach and basically have a marketplace of content baked into the tool. So all the standards, laws and regulations, controls, risk libraries, all the stuff that you need as a risk and compliance professional, you just kind of add in the same way that you add, you know, using a, your iPhone or mobile app you know, you add apps to your phone, it's the same kind of concept. Uh, so that's the first thing. The second thing is uh, platforms been designed for uh, both businesses and advisors. So advisors can white label the entire platform and use that in a kind of parent-child context where an advisory firm with lots of clients or a portfolio or a fund manager with lots of assets, franchisor with lots of franchisees, any of those scenarios, our platform is been designed from the ground up to support, you know, really quite natively. And the third thing is um, our artificial intelligence engine. So we have, you know, we, we started development on Haley, who, you know, that's the name of the AI platform or the AI engine is, uh, is Haley. We started work on Haley 18 months, nearly two years ago, right at the very start when we were in product development with some 
PhDs back then. And, uh, you know, the, the AI engine does some remarkable stuff around what, what's referred to as compliance mapping. So under, understand the overlap between different standards, laws and regulations that are out there. So, you know, with privacy, for example, um, you know, there's GDPR, but, you know, we all know there's, there's other privacy um, uh, laws out there in the market and uh, all, of those, all of those laws inevitably have some degree of overlap. So Haley identifies that overlap in seconds, which reduces the overall footprint of uh, compliance uh, burden that organizations need to deal with. And so since you're the CEO, founder of a company, you're going to be the, the expert on growth here. So I'm just going to pick your brain. What would you say the biggest challenge for growth when you think of the word innovation? Um, I reckon um, the, the, the trick is like we, we are somewhat disruptive and, and I use that word uh, in, in a kind of classical Clay Christensen definition of disruption, right? We're, we're taking a problem that was previously uh, only dealt with by companies that built more and more sophisticated products for a more and for more, you know, greater and greater sophisticated buyer um, and, and we're priced accordingly. We've taken the other approach to say, okay, let's make this super affordable for tons of folk um, and, and in doing so, make it more accessible. And, and so our growth is largely off the back of the fact that we're providing what was only available to the people who could you know, afford you know, seven figure, six figure implementations. We're now making that kind of software available to every business, small businesses that might be spending a couple of thousand bucks a month, a couple of thousand bucks a year, sorry, um, on software that helps them with risk and compliance. In the past, they would have just used spreadsheets. So there's a big, there's a big kind of paradigm shift that we're driving um, and I think that's the right side of the curve to be on, frankly, you know, um, I, I, I feel with a lot of these sorts of things, it's like being in the, in the business of selling accounting software and working for Oracle or, or SAP, you know, it's just the wrong side of the curve. You know, there's always going to be a market there that you can sell to maybe the fortune 100. Um, but that market's become going to become smaller and smaller and smaller. And the guys that are doing cloud-based software that are releasing software, you know, updates their software every few days, um, can scale super quickly, data center operations around the world, everything's managed as code. Um, you know, that's, that's I think, the, the, the place that you'd want to be. And, and that's where we are. And, you know, um, so in that sense, I think we're uh, disruptive in our, in our innovation stance. Very cool. Yeah, it reminds me of a quote that I heard one time that says um, it was it says that culture is the great enemy of fine art, you know, so the idea that right. if you have to appre if you have to learn how to appreciate something, it might not be that worthy of appreciation, you know, right. Um, so, yeah, I mean, maybe it's too early in the morning to get really philosophical on you. But <laughs> That's right. That's right. Um, so what, just thinking along the same lines when it comes to growth. What would you say is the biggest challenge for ROI? Um, in terms of what our shareholders expect, or you, you mean a return on investment for us or our customers? Um, well, if you're thinking about growth and you're thinking about ROI, it seems like you know at certain stages of the business you're going to be trying to trying to save pennies, right? And and actually, there's I think there's kind of a time gap. Um, but yeah. just even like with, with growth, what would you say would be the biggest challenge to actually getting that return on investment? Um, I think at, at some point, ultimately, with a business like ours, you're focused on like volume. You need volume in order to, you know, gener gener generate a return on investment. Um, but, you know, as a startup, you know, that, that takes a while to get that flywheel to spin, right? So it's all, it's all about sort of trying to manage the unit economics of, you know, right at the start, the cost of sale for us is obviously far outweighs the revenue, but in due course, obviously that flywheel will spin, referrals will come in. The nature of our business model is also highly scalable in the sense that when we sell to a, um, a an advisor, they then use our software with all their clients. That's the bit that becomes super easy uh, in terms of our scalability, because we ultimately or have then a whole heap of customers that we've never 
seen or heard of before using our platform and paying for it um, just through the referral mechanisms that are inherent in the advisor working with their client. Just switching gears here for a second, I want to talk about you as a leader. What kind of content do you consume to educate yourself and, and grow as a person and as a professional? Yeah, look, I, I tend to kind of read mainstream finance business news. Um, interestingly, like I occasionally dip into sort of thought leadership, um, you know, that's, that's probably more on the strategic front, um, you know, different publications. I like stuff that's kind of meaty and interesting, um, you know, perhaps different points of view on, you know, global economic um, shifts, like shifts to different economic policies, um, different trends around innovation, like what we've what we've been talking about. You know, what does disruption mean? How does it, what does it look like? What markets are still untapped? I think it's quite amazing, ultimately, that the world of risk and compliance is still not. Um, you know, it's it's still pretty old school, right? It's still pretty fragmented. It hasn't been disrupted big time yet. Um, I think it's going to be very quickly, but. Um, yeah, I, I tend to jump around a whole heap of different things. I love uh, listening to audio books or podcasts. There's a couple of um, couple of favourites I've got there. Um, yeah. All right. Well, what would be one of the podcasts? Why don't you just let us in a little so bit further? There's a there's a guy by the name of Patrick O'Shaughnessy who who runs a podcast called Invest Like the Best. Uh, it sounds a bit uh, sort of. You know, the title sounds a bit corny, but he, he, he's a really super smart guy, brings onto his show some amazingly talented, interesting people. And uh, yeah, I find that, find that quite stimulating. There's another couple of guys, Ben and James, who run a podcast called Exponent um, on sort of uh, strategy and, and uh, all things digital. Um, but again, kind of quite meaty, right? They'll spend an hour talking to each other about a very you know antitrust issue in relation to consumer data rights or something like that um so yeah i find those sorts of things really really quite uh, quite stimulating nice so we're slowly coming to the end of the interview but before we end i just want to jump into our rapid fire section so this is where i just ask you questions mercilessly and uh and just bludgeon you with them until until you have to say mercy um, <laughs> Or I just ask questions and you answer them as quickly as possible. That's the uh, sure. that's the abridged version. So, what was the last book that you read or listened to? Uh, you said you're doing an audio thing. So, uh, yeah, the Elon Musk uh, autobiography. Okay, I didn't even know I had one out. Well, not an autobiography. The, the the book about Elon Musk. It's not an autobiography. It's a, it's just about his story. Gotcha. What's the single thing that your company is focused on at the moment the most? Um, yeah, growth. Yeah, I'd say growth. Customer acquisition, ultimately. If there were no boundaries in technology, what would be the one thing you want to have fixed for your company today? Uh, content ingestion. Getting content in the public domain and getting it into our platform. It's a pain. <laughs> What's the last thing that kept you awake at night? about your company? Uh, our product roadmap and prioritization. All right. Love that. <laughs> well, you've obviously, you're still getting up early in the morning for this interview, so kudos <laughs> to you. What's the one piece of advice? Let's just say if you were to start your, your professional journey over again, what would be the one piece of advice you give yourself? Uh, probably take more risk sooner. Uh, yeah, ultimately. All right, everyone, that was Anthony Stevens for sixclicks.io. And uh, Anthony, thank you so much for being on the show today. The last Goodbye. thing that we, we, let, we let our guests uh, have the last word. So if there's anything you feel like we left out or you just want to sum up the show or you want to say something, I don't know, whatever you want, we just give you the last word. Anthony, the floor is yours. Uh, thanks, Sean. Uh, I just want to say, like this, uh, this market around risk and compliance. There's a there's a lot of people who haven't progressed uh, in a great, in, you know, it's been it's been tough. You know, it's the huge amounts of burdens, many challenges for those folk. And ultimately, whether it's six clicks or anything else, get get on on onto some uh, 
innovational technology that makes that process easier because uh, you know a lot of businesses need it and it's in the interest of consumers as well. So that would be my comment. Awesome. Thanks for being on the show today, Anthony. Thanks, Sean. See you, mate.